Hello everybody, and is everybody well today? Oh, I'm so glad to hear that. Indeed I am. And me? Oh, <clears throat> well, I'm doing very well, thank you. Still above the grass, you know, always a good, good thing that. And the weather here? Not brilliant at all. This is still British winter weather that we're experiencing. Cold, drizzly, cloudy. Yeah, I'd rather be in some place tropical right now, wouldn't you? <laughs> now, today is a special day for young Mark. Now, Mark, are you there? Mark, I should tell you, is a young teenager. I think he's a teenager who's from Toronto, Canada, and he has a YouTube site called Just Kiko. And he's got hundreds of videos on it. They are gaming videos and flight videos, naturally, because that's what we're doing today. And he wrote me a couple of months ago. Do you remember, Mark? You said you'd like me to make a flight between Toronto and Cairo in Egypt. Hmm. Well, Ryanair 186 is a great airplane, but it won't go that far. <laughs> I would have to have a Dreamliner that would make that kind of a trip. So I asked you, if you remember, if I could have a shorter flight. And you said, well, of course. How about a flight between Toronto and Newark, New Jersey? So thumbs up for that. Thumbs up for that. Yes, we can definitely do that. So, Mark, I did some research and I found that Air Canada flies that route several times a day. And I'm going to be following the flight 7472. That's the Air Canada 7472. And if you want to look that up, go to Flight Aware and put in AC7472 and then that will bring up all of the history. Now, for I got some great scenery for these two airports. CYYZ, the scenery there for Toronto, is made by Fly Tampa. Very detailed, beautiful scenery. And it even has birds there too, so we'll have to watch out for bird strikes. And the KEWR scenery for Newark, New Jersey, that is part of a package of New York scenery made by Driswicki Design. I hope I pronounced that correctly. If not, please forgive me. And again, great scenery, very good detail especially of the New York skyline, which hopefully we'll get a glimpse of as we're coming into New Jersey. So, Mark, if you're ready, are you ready to have a flight today? Good. Now, we need to first of all go into pre-flight because we need to plan this flight very carefully. And then we need to make a flight plan and after that, we need to go into Navigraph in order to build up the flight plan and put all the charts that we're going to need for the flight. So if you're ready, let's go into pre-flight. Are you ready, Mark? Okay. Well, here we are. Mark, we're in Flight Aware and we're looking at 
Air Canada 7472, and here you can see the other designators right there. This one's expected to depart in a couple of hours, and it says it's departing from gate F60. I looked up at the where these gates are, and we'll have a look at that in a moment. And gate A23 is where it arrived at Newark, New Jersey, or will arrive, because this flight has not yet departed. But they have got a flight plan already made for it. And here you can see this dotted line is their intended flight route to come in down here to Newark, New Jersey. Now, you notice all of this green stuff here? The, this is current weather conditions. So this gives us a bit of a clue as to what we might expect. Looking at the information, this is what I want you to, wanted to point out to you. This is the route. See, in Canada and in America, they will publish the routes. They don't do this in Europe for some particular reason, but they do do it over there. And this is the route that is going to be flown today by this particular jet. They're filing their altitude at 27,000 feet. The distance is 302 nautical miles and they're expecting 426 miles an hour on their route. So we are going to be following this particular flight when it departs. Right, let's have a look at Windy. Now here's windy.com for CYY Zulu. This is Toronto here, you got it. Look at the wind, it's coming down pretty much directly from the north and it is coming at a good clip. It says here the wind is 360 60 degrees, 14 knots, visibility 15 statute miles. Clouds few at 2,500 feet, overcast 8,000. Temperature is a chilly minus four, much colder than it is here in England today. The altimeter setting is 3027, just a little bit above standard. Now, looking at the runways, this is, we've got two principal runways here, here and here. Now I did check and I did see live pictures of flights coming in to land right now at Toronto and they came in on this one in that direction. Whether or not this is one of those airports that has arrivals at one runway and departures on the other, I don't know. We will have to find out which one is going to be in operation. But I did look and find out that the previous flight, the previous Air Canada flight, was parked at one of these stands right here at this particular terminal. So I'm going to try to see if we can't get into one of those stands as well. Looking at our destination, here's New York and there is New Jersey. Now here the wind has shifted. Now here the wind is coming from the south rather than from the north. It says it's 220 degrees, six knots, visibility, four statute miles, light rain, mist, clouds few at 200 feet, oh my goodness, and broken at 4,000 feet overcast. So there are some weather conditions here, but the temperature is a warm plus three degrees. Altimeter 30.28. That's not bad, it's a little, it's just a little bit higher than standard. But do you see this, this MVFR? That means it's down to minimums and it could well be 
IFR by the time that we come in. Because if you look here, the history, it was IFR up until an hour ago. So I don't know what we're going to find when we land. We may find that uh, we have to make <coughs> a typical Ryanair 186 landing with or without the permission. <laughs> Looking at the runways, here's the airport. Now, if the wind is coming in from the south, the likelihood is that we will be coming in on one of these two runways here, either two to right or two to left. And here you can see these are the two long runways. Again, I don't know whether there are restrictions as to which runway is going to be in operation. I don't know, but we will find out. The other thing I discovered is that previous flights of Air Canada, they came in and docked down here somewhere. So perhaps we will follow that. Again, it depends on how busy the airport is, which runway we use and which is easiest to get to. But I'd like to try to follow the same route if I can. Okay, let's go into SimBrief then and make ourselves a flight plan. We are Ryanair, we are 186, and we're going to depart from CYY Zulu. And we're going to go to KEWR. Ah, the alternate is Boston. So in case things get pear-shaped, that's where we go. There's our airframe. And there's our registration for Ryanair. Cruise profile is six. It says schedule flight time is one hour and 25 minutes. Departure, they're saying, is going to be 3-3 three, three right, arrival on 0-4 left. Well, I have no idea if that's going to be the case or not. We have full on passengers and we have one ton of champagne and caviar. You're too young for the champagne, but we will have other drinks for you, my friend. And here it is, it's coming up with the same flight routing that we just saw on the Air Canada flight on FlightAware. Going down below, here you can see the departure. It's suggesting that we take off there and go all the way down here swinging down around and coming into Newark, New Jersey there. And here is Boston. So should anything go wrong, that is where we are going to go for our alternate. Okay, let's scroll to the top. What we'll do is we'll save this flight. I haven't put in the flight altitude Let's see if it gives us flight level 270 as the others have been, and we'll go from there. Ah, interesting. This is giving, a, giving us a flight level of 350. So we'll be climbing up there, maybe weather that's, condition, uh, that's the condition there. Or perhaps the fact that we're a 737-800 and perhaps we can actually go higher and better than the other jets that are doing that. Airtime is 59 minutes. There's the block fuel, 6433. There's the routing. And no remarks on that. So down here, Here's Ryanair 186, and here is our flight altitude. 
And that is our flight routing. That first part, the KEPTA2, that is a standard instrument departure, a SID. Then this is the first waypoint, the second waypoint, the third waypoint, and then we come in on the Flossy 4 arrival, which is a STAR, a standard approach. Down here, we need to know its cost index 6. Here's the average wind for our altitude. And then looking down here, there's the block fuel. Right here is the reserves that we're going to need to put in. And that's the amount for the trip and the taxi. If everything works out and we are on 33 right and coming in on 04 left, well then that will be the flight route and I will put that in the information box down below this video. Scrolling down, let's have a look at the descent. Now, we're going to need to know the wind direction and speed at flight level 200, which is 20,000 feet. And here you can see 65 knots. And at flight level 150, there it is 52 nautical miles an hour. And at 10,000 feet, 51. So we've got some strong winds. Strong winds indeed. All right, I'm going to scroll down now all the way down to the bottom. And let's have a look at the weather profile. Well, the weather seems to be quite unsettled, doesn't it? There's definitely, definitely quite a bit of frontal movement. There's something coming in here and there's something down there. So we are going to have some very interesting weather conditions. Finding our flight level, here we are. This is the nearest one at 340. Now, this is what, <laughs> look at this. You see these, these tail feathers to these arrows? They're very, very heavy. And that indicates we've got some very strong winds. And they are, for the most part, they're helping us because they'll be coming in slightly behind us. Not true totally behind us, but enough to give us an edge as we fly down here. But when we come onto this leg, it's going to be crosswind all the way in. And it might be a bumpy landing. Not necessarily the best. Let's have a look at the profile. Here we go, starting out from Toronto here. The climb up here, straight across, straight down to Newark, New Jersey. This wavy line at the top here, this is the troposphere. And you can look this up sometime, but the, usually it's, there's a difference in temperature. Uh, at that troposphere and the air quality changes a little bit. So we're going to be below the troposphere and definitely in the middle of all of this. All right, Mark, then let's go into Navigraph charts now and pull all the flight charts that we're going to need for our journey today. And here we are in Navigraph charts, click flights, new flight, from Simbrief, and this is the one that we just made. And here you can see underneath, you can see the entire route all the way going into Newark, New Jersey. So I'm going to click on this and open the charts list. We're going to need to know the airport info, so I'm going to pin that down below. I'm going to need to know the parking gates I'm going to also need to know the parking position coordinates. The, this is the 
Chapter 2 departure that is being proposed as our departure. I don't know if this is going to be it or not, but that's the one. But I'm going to pin it just in case. If we get directed to another runway for departure, then we will have to change this. Looking now over at the destination, we're going to need the airport information. And here you can see the runways. There are three big run, well, two long runways and a shorter one. We're going to need parking gates, so we'll pin that. And then we're going to need to look at the approach. Now, it's the Flossy 4 that is coming in. So this is the, this is the Flossy 4 route, comes in here. There's Flossy. And it comes then in that way. I'm going to pin that. Now, it's saying that we will be coming in on the 04 left. I don't know if that's going to be the case or not. But if it is, then we will be using this one for our approach. And here you can see what that looks like. So from this point, we will be coming in probably to Kilmer, M Bay, and then straight down the runway in that direction, if that's what it is. Now, I'm going to go and click here. So if we're making an ILS on runway four left and we're coming in on the Kilmer, then that's the one I'll select here. So that way it joins up the route and that's what we will be coming in on. I don't know if that's the one that will actually be the arrival, but if it is, then we're prepared. All right. We've got everything that we need. There's our route. And all we need to do now is go into the cockpit and get the cockpit all warmed up and ready for the flight. Ah, welcome aboard Just Kiko. Mark, isn't it? So do come in and take a seat. Now, as I understand it, because I had a look at your YouTube channel, you have been in a simulator cockpit before in Toronto. Well, I would imagine this is not much different to the one that you've already been in. So you should know your way around, I hope. And just in case, we'll go through all the steps bit by bit and I'll try to explain them as we go along. Is that okay? All right. I've already been around and I put, kicked the tires and made sure all of the pins are pulled and everything is set. And we are here in Toronto Airport C Y Y Z, and it is a very detailed airport. The frame rate at the minute is 11, 12, that's about it. I'm hoping it will not interfere with the uh, flow of everything because this is a really nice airport. But anyway, that's where we're at. So, first thing we do. Mark is we turn on the battery and we make sure that we have enough voltage up here coming from the battery. Then we turn on the fuel pumps in order to get some fuel moving around and then we turn on the APU. Now the APU, in case you weren't aware, is located in the tail of the aircraft and it will generate electricity for us, generate 115 volts, which we need in order to get the whole uh, cockpit programmed. 
and also run the galley, get the microwaves running and everything else. It also will take heat from the unit and blow it through the compressors through those little nozzles overhead of your seat. And so we will be listening for that in just a moment. Now I'm looking for this blue light to turn on. In a moment it should, and then, ah, there it is. Now I, am, I have switched from the battery to the generator coming from the rear end. And looking up here, we are showing that we have 115 volts coming in. So now we can do a lot of things. One thing we can do is we can turn on the IRS and we have two. There's always built-in redundancies on commercial airliners. And these are the GPS, the sat navs, if you like, for the flight deck. We'll turn on the galley and that allows then the crew to make tea, coffee, heat up food and all the rest. The emergency exit lights. These are the lights that go straight down the main aisleways and shows uh, exactly where the exits will be. And also there are the exit lights over the emergency exits over the wings. We turn on the no smoking, fasten seat belt. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right window heat. This is to heat up the windows to prevent any fogging or any misting and certainly any ice buildup because it is cold here. And then we turn on the probes because it is cold. I want to make sure that the probes are good and warm. Then down here, I'm going to turn on the left and the right electrical. And here you can see the lights are on for the forward service hatch and the equipment. Now that's the air stairs that go down outside to allow passengers to get on and off. I know that there are jetways here and a lot of airliners will use those, but it they actually will charge the airline for their use. And Ryanair, in order to keep all of its costs down, don't use that. They use the drop-down stairs, which then they control when they bring them up and take them down and don't have to wait for anybody to drive the equipment to get it free. That way they can cut down the turnaround time. All very complicated. Now over here, the last thing that we need to do is we need to turn on the APU bleed, turn on the recirculating fans and the packs. Now listen, there, you can hear that rush of air now going through the nozzles overhead as heat is being pumped into the cabin. So we should get nice and cozy in just a moment here. So now this board is pretty much ready, except I need to turn on the steady light and that's the light that warns everybody down below, all the ground crew, that we're in here, we're programming, we're getting things ready and therefore they shouldn't be touching things that they shouldn't ought to be. Next thing I need to do, I need to program the FMC. Now over here, the first thing I've got to do is I need to check that the AIRAC data is current and that the program is current and that there are no errors. Then I push this and then I put in the code, four letter code for Toronto. And you know what that is? Of course you do. It's C Y Y Zulu and we are at stand 134 so I'll put 134. It says not in the database. All right, not a problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the next page. The, this is the actual GPS that the aircraft itself is picking up. So we'll go ahead and put that in. 
Now, we have our beginning point for the GPS and our sat-nav, if you will, all set. Now we need to do the route. So here we need to put in our uh, origin, that is Charlie Yankee Yankee Zulu, and we're going to go to Kilo Echo Whiskey and what is it? Romeo. Right here we're putting in our flight number which is RYR 186. Then we go down to next page and we go and put in our first waypoint which is BMPAH. So BMPAH. And then the second point is AEVON. So AEVON. And then we go directly then to G, G double E. So G double E. And that is it. Activate, execute. Now we have all of that ready. Now I'm going to go and put in a fix. Now the fix is on our screens. When we get close to our destination, I want to be able to put some green dotted lines around our target airport. I want to put a 30 mile one, a 10 mile one, and a four mile one. I'll tell you why in a moment. So, K-E-W-R and I do that by doing a slash four and then a slash 10 and a slash 30. That gives me three lines so I can see what my distance is to the airport. The 30 miles, when it comes to P3D, which is the simulator uh, software, it's set up so that I cannot contact the tower to get permission to do my landing procedures until I am 30 miles or less. So that's, that's the reason for that. The 10 is when I'm within 10 miles of landing, I need to go through certain procedures for landing to get everything ready. And I need to be at flaps 10, I need to have a slow speed, several other things need to be set up in the configuration. So that's the reason for the 10, is to let me know what I'm looking for. And four, Ryanair has a little rule. You're not supposed to drop the gear down until you're four miles from landing. That way you can maximize the fuel efficiency of the aircraft. Didn't know that? That's one of the things. Now, I'm going to go into descent. I'm going to go into forecast. And the transition level in the United States is flight level 180, so I'm going to put that in. But I need to put in the wind speed and direction for the three altitudes that we looked at earlier. Flight level 200. Flight level 150 and flight level 100. So at flight level 200 or 20,000 feet, this is for when we're coming in for descent, that is 245 and 65 miles an hour. So 245 at 65 knots, that is pretty fast. And at 150, it is 236 at 52, 236 at 52. And at 100, that is 10,000 feet, it is 23051, 230 and 51. The next thing I need to do is I need to put in the Q and H, or the barometric pressure, and converting that to millibars, it is 
1026. 1026 is the barometric pressure for our destination. Execute that. Now I'm going to go into departures and arrivals. And here are all of the departures and all of the standard instrument departures on the side. Now I have to contact the tower to find out which runway we're going to be assigned to. First of all though, I'm going to tune in to ATIS. That's the Automated Terminal Information Service and see what that is all about. So, the frequency of ATIS is 120.82. 120.82. Well, we have Mike, and it's talking about six left and six right and runway five. So if we're going to be departing from six left, let's hope that's what we get. Uh, 9,697 feet runway, plenty of runway. Yes, we should do all right on that. So let's contact the ground and ask them permission to do our taxi and our departure. But in the meantime, all of our passengers are on board. So I'm going to bring up the stairs and close the hatch. And we'll ask the tower to give us permission now. Oh, that is the electrical stairs that you hear coming up. And we want to go to the south. Toronto ground, Ryanair 186 with Mike request taxi to the active south departure. Ryanair 186 taxi to and hold short of runway 6 left using taxiway 67 Alpha Lima Tango Bravo Victor Echo Delta contact tower on 118.7 when ready. Taxi hold short runway 6 left via taxiway 67 Alpha Lima Tango Bravo Victor Echo Delta Ryanair 186. Right, we have our clearance and we're going to go on runway 06 left and we can still use the standard instrument departure it's going to work so we'll keep it at the CAPTA 2 so we'll need now to look at the CAPTA 2 there it is, the CAPTA 2, put that in and the transition is going to be BM car, okay? That one right there. Now we're going to go to departures and arrivals again, and this time for our arrival into Newark. All right, the proposal is that we're coming in on 04 left, so we'll go ahead and put that in because we don't know if we'll change or not and then the we're coming in on the flossy four which is that one and it will be the kilmer transition and so we'll execute that now we're going to go to legs and i'm going to switch this screen to the plan and then i'm going to go through these steps to see if we have any discontinuity and there's the one there one here one there there's the posse coming down looking good so far there's coming down there's a vector Uh, 
I'm going to cut the vector out and bring us straight in onto the runway for a landing. That good. We have it done. Right, I'm going to go here now and I'm going to turn on the weather radar for this side and data over here. I'm going to change yours if I might mark. I'm going to put terrain on yours and activate the data and then I'm going to turn on the TCAS so that our position will light up on the board. I'm also going to turn on the anti-skid. I'm going to turn on the your damper and look for this light to go out, which it just did. Good. We are moving along. Now the next thing I've got to do down here is I need to go into the route and perform the initialization. Now, on the plan fuel, do you remember? We have 6,433 kilograms of fuel but we have reserves of 2886 and the trip and taxi is going to take 2881 that comes to 5767 or if we round it out it's to 5.8 so I'm going to put 5.8 in there the reserves 2886 is close enough to 2.9 2.9 put that in there and then I'm going to put, double click that and it calculates everything. Cost index is 6. Our altitude for our flight is 350. Cruise wind for our flight level is 254 at 95. Wow, 254 at 95. is that as a fast wind. Transition altitude in the United States is 180, so I'm going to put that in there. Execute that. Outside air temperature is 5, so I'm going to go ahead and put 5 in there. Take off, I'm going to use flaps 10. Double click this, and it will calculate the center of gravity and this will be the value that needs to be put on the trim wheel, which is right here next to the yoke. And then on this side, I'm just going to press once for each of those top three buttons. V1 is getting ready for takeoff. VR is rotation speed. V2 is takeoff speed. Right, I now have the basic information that we need. So now I'm going to go here and put that information into the MCP. So we're departing on runway 06 left. So that means the heading that we need to set is 057. So I'm going to put in 057 here. I'll put 057 in the heading right here and then for yours mark I'll put 057 over here as well. Our altitude is 35,000 feet. I know that the air traffic control assigns all the altitudes but we are going to presume that we get what we want. And then up here I'm going to put in 35,000 feet into this box because this is the aircraft pressurization control. There we go. Flight level altitude is 35,000. I'm going to leave the landing altitude as zero. And why? Because the elevation of Newark Airport is 17 feet. So. This way, when we open up the doors in Newark, New Jersey, nobody's ears are going to pop. Okay, 
now we've got that the next thing I need to do is I need to check the flight plan so I put the flight director on here and on there and then I press these two buttons we have a good flight plan and then on the throttle VOR VOR1 and we are set now the other thing I need to put in is the decision height and that is a figure that will appear down here and I just turn this and the decision height is 110 and what that does is it when it gets to 110 there we go on the barometer pressure then it will come out and say minimums minimums and then we have to make a decision whether we're going to land or abort and go somewhere else okay now it's time to do our checklist so fuel is check windows lock check seat belt signs are on check door lights are all out MCP is programmed, takeoff thrust is all done, pre flight is completed, rudder air along trim is done, taxi takeoff briefing. Now, we are parked at this particular point. When we do our pushback and start, we need to go out here, have our tail go in that direction, and our nose go to the left. So, that's that part done anti-collision light is now going on and so we are now ready to go so I'm going to go here now and I'm going to get ready for the pushback so it will be a standard L turn nose to the left there's the tug and so if you're ready, all you have to do now is make sure you're buckled up and your seat is adjusted. By the way, which engine would you like to start? Number one or number two? One or two. Oh, you'd like to start number one? The number one is what we will start. So I'm going to switch this to generator one and we'll get ourselves ready to go now. Right, I've activated the flight chart so that you can see where we are. I've got my seat adjusted. Everything looks good, so let's... Target to ground. Go ahead. We've been cleared for pushback and start. They want the tail to our right. Copy that, ready to push. Tail to the right. Parking brake release, please. Parking brake is released. Now I have to turn off the blowers. So the air conditioning or the heat because I want the blowers now to go into the engine to start the spin and in a moment I'm going to click over this to the ground Brakes and that will start the spin on the engine so here you go start valve has opened the spin has started there's the N2 that's the spin it's building up quite rapidly we're looking good on that when this gets to 24, then I am introducing the fuel. And then it will ignite the fuel. There we go. And that starts the engine. Now the engine gas temperature is building up. It's igniting nicely. I'm looking for the low oil pressure light to go out. It just did. Engine gas temperature is coming up very nicely yes looking good on that you should hear the engines in a moment there you hear those engines all right let's check up here we have 115 volts so i'm now going to switch to engine number two i've got engine number two started there's the n2 winding up when it gets to 24 i'll bring in the fuel and we'll survive, I hope, for all complete. these cabin the brakes, brakes are on. All these kamikaze brakes vehicles set. are out. 
There's 24, bring in the fuel. Now the engine gas temperature is building up very nicely here. Engine is pulled, watch for the slip release from pads on your right, and we flight. Thank you, gentlemen. And it's building up very nicely, the low oil pressure light just went out. I'm looking for this to keep building. And it's coming up very nicely. Ah, we can hear the engines on that. When this little red tick mark goes off, then I know I've got stable generating power coming from both engines. It needs to stabilize. There. Now over here, I'm going to switch now to the generators coming from the main engines. And then over here, I'm going to turn on the packs again to get the heat going. But I'm going to now turn off the APU and that switch goes off because we no longer need the auxiliary power unit because we're running off the main engines. I'm now going to turn on the taxi lights and attendance, get yourselves ready. Okay, now we need to go down there and we'll need to go to the left on the taxiway until we find our way down to the threshold of 06 left. All right, let's hope we don't get lost, shall we? Okay, brakes are off. And I'm going to go to flaps 10. Right, let's get over here onto our line. There's a uh, a jet. I'm not sure if that's... Wow, there's a lot of jets here. Well, I'm going to go around here. snow blowing across here that's all snow I'm gonna have to wait for this one to get out of the way This 
this, I think, is the... Charlie Taxiway. airport this one very detailed well we keep going down here until we get to Charlie 4 and then we swing around to get to the end of the active runway And there are a couple of aircraft getting ready to depart on the same runway. to land directly ahead. Six left to south departure. Ryanair 186 
cuisine back there. Did they take good care of you? Oh, good, I'm glad to hear that. Well, we've had some changes. The weather is shifting and changing very rapidly. We are not allowed to land on runway 04 as we thought. We are now landing on runway 22 left. Oh well. So I had to do a lot of reprogramming to make sure that we were going to come in to the proper landing area. Now, we're just starting to descend into all of this cloud which is covering New York at the moment. We have, we're dropping down and we are on our way to the Teterboro BOR and that's an initial approach phase. Once we get to that, we will then turn on to our final in order to land at, on runway 22 left. And we have been given clearance to land, we are cleared to land. So technically, we are now on base leg, base leg, to land on runway 22 left. And it is pretty filthy out there. We have all sorts of clouds the visibility is going to be an issue. I've slowed the aeroplane down to 180 knots because the air is rough and bumpy. I have the 219 set in the course for when we make our intercept on the final. The Engine start switches are continuous, all lights are on, pass and seatbelt signs are on, no smoking sign is on, everything is set now for making our landing. I have flaps five at the minute, and as soon as we get to Teterboro, which is the 10 mile point, that's 10 miles from touchdown. Then I'll go to flaps 10 and get set up for a landing, um, an ILS landing on runway 22 left. I've switched the plates. So the plate that you can see now at the bottom right is actually the one for coming in for runway 22 left. Wow, so there's a lot of, a lot of changes there. My goodness. Well, you wanted an exciting flight. This is an exciting flight. It's like one of those things, you know, you, you have, you know, a couple of hours of absolute boredom and then you have five minutes of absolute terror. <laughs> All right, well, we should be fine. I've got your screen here set to uh, a profile for the approach and I'm looking for the down slope on here to intercept with the glide slope So let me show you what I mean. As you can see there, we're on our descent, that's the white line, and that purple line that you see with the vertical TEB, that is the Teterboro VOR, and we will intercept then the glide slope for a descent at that point. We are clear to land runway 22 left and we are following an aircraft on final. Well, 
as you can see, we are totally IFR in this lot. There is no reference to the ground, so everything now has to be on instrument. So you have to learn to trust your instruments for landing. I just hope that I don't bump and break any of the champagne glasses. That would be embarrassing. Well, we're coming up on the Teterboro BOR in just a minute. And then when that happens, I'm going to push this button, which is the BOR localizer button, and to lock on to go on that route. my eye open for other aircraft. I don't want to have a collision while I'm in the middle of all of this muck. Right, we're just now turning on to, we're turning over Teterboro and we are we're locked on good we are locked on to the final approach. We are now on final approach. We're on final. To land, if we manage to be able to find, if we can find a runway to land on. We've intercepted the glide slope and I am now 2500 2500 and I've intercepted the glide slope we are now on the glide slope we're now going down the glide slope for runway 22 left I know there's not much to see I can see plenty of weather there's snow everywhere there's snow, rain, sleet you name it we've got it so I'm going now to flaps 10 and I'm going to slow the aircraft down I'm taking control of the aircraft speed on this right here I do not have the runway in sight in fact I don't even have the airport in sight The frame rate is taking a hit because of all the detail on the surrounding area and the weather. We are now coming up on four miles. So, gear down, flaps down. So engine start switch is continuous, cabins, secure. Speed brake lever is on. Landing gear down, free green, and flaps down, green lights. Ah, I am beginning to see 1000. The airport ahead, but it's very, very difficult to see. not have the oh I can just make out the two white and two red for the runway ahead it is really really bad I have control ha <laughs> ha 500 500 check we're coming down the glide slope Minimums. 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 Fifty. 
on that little satellite. So how to get to it? All right. We'll go here, turn around, swing up there. Okay, we'll do that. Good thinking. Oh, there's FedEx here. There's, this is a busy airport, isn't it? But it's the markings. Where are the markings on the ground? Okay, turn in here. terminal spot over there. Let's see if we can uh, make for it. Not sure what the number is. It'll, there is a plaque on the bottom which will tell us in a moment. It is 32. This is 32. So turn on to this and get ourselves lined up. So we managed to get into and okay, break on. All right, now, shut down. And now I just go through all of the steps and reverse everything. Seatbelt signs are. Right, stairs are going down, doors are being opened. Window heat turned off, probe is off, hydraulic pumps are off, and all of that is off, all lights are off. Okay, right, APU is off, fuel is off, battery is off, and shutdown is complete. Well, Mark, that was quite a trip. Didn't get to see the runway until the very last minute. But that's what it is with instrument flying. And I do have an IFR, so it wasn't all that bad. But the weather is vicious. I could feel, even in a simulator, I could feel all the forces of the wind blowing about me. And of course it does make a difference when you think you're pointed at something and then the wind suddenly shears and you're knocked off. Oh well, but we landed. And we landed safe. As they say, any landing you can walk away from is a good landing, yeah. <laughs> well, I hope that this flight met with your approval and that we did it proud. I hope it was what you expected or hoped for even. It was a pleasure making this flight for you and I hope that you have a great day there in Tor uh, see, yeah, Toronto. That's where you are, isn't it? In Toronto. I hope you have a great day there and I will see you again, I hope, on Ryanair 186 flights in the future. Everybody else, stay well and see you next time. Bye everybody.